Up next, we've got uh, Sean Barnes and Carl Davidson from the 232 uh, Degrees podcast, um, which is all about unlocking great books. Um, and he'll be, they'll be joined by Stephen, Stephen Moe. Um, as a little wee reminder, please feel free to uh, navigate through any of the sessions that are on, on offer today and have a referred referral to the online program and the links there um, to see what else is happening. But um, without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Sean Barnes and Carl Davidson. Um, thank you for joining hey, us. Hey, Pete, how are you? Good, thanks, Barb. We thought we'd come in together today, so we're breaking the Zoom rules. <laughs> right. Great, and I'm here too. <laughs> G'day, Steve. <laughs> hey there. Shuffling between rooms effortlessly. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, there's a little transition as people jump around because there's lots of different options. It's one of the problems is that I think all of us would like to be in every single room downloading what's going on because um, I am jumping between them and they're really amazing things going on. So it's really yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, we can talk about that because yeah. there's a parallel. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, but th for the two of you guys, like I've I've been a fan of your podcast, the Two Three Two podcast, which is really focused on books, and I love your format. It's the two of you just having a conversation that you probably would have had anyway, right? But yeah. you've got the recording equipment on, you're listening to each other, and the thing I love about it is that you jump from like, let's talk about a self help book, and then it's like an epic novel, and then Dr. Seuss. And you seem to weave in like there's all these different flavors of books. So I just thought it would be really fun to have the two of you on this, you know, yeah. little half hour slot to fun. talk about books because books is something that I love as well. So I'm kind of interposing yeah. into your world. Um, I'd love to hear a bit more about you and, and the books that you love. Um, and then maybe you can ask me some questions as well. But was yeah, what was yeah, the yeah, origin? Yeah, we we want what to was the origin for the podcast? How did you end up talking, you know, about books? Well, <laughs> we well we talk about books. Um, so <laughs> I always I always like to say, to Carl, I was a, I was a solution looking for a problem. Um, right. I, I was I was really interested in the format of podcasting. Um, yeah, I've listened to podcasts. You, you've listened to podcasts yeah, for a long forever. time yeah. as well. And and what I love about podcasting is um, the long format. You know, like you you you're getting. You've got everything from your five-minute podcasts all the way through to your. Uh, some of them, I mean, some of the Joe Rogans go for. They seem to go for about eighteen yeah. hours, but um, but you know, like that that idea that you can have a longer conversation with someone, and um, we yeah, we, so we we realised that every time we catch up, which was I don't know, yeah. probably monthly, I suppose we used to catch up, we'd probably spend about half our time talking about books yeah. yeah like what are you reading also i mean it's yeah. look it's a great way to get to know somebody right steve like what are you reading what did you read last what are you reading next yeah is that why you're doing it well, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> and, because it's about the connection yes. right like yeah, I, totally, it's totally. like you know where does the book fit in where does it mm. fit into your life mm. but where does it fit into the the rest of the literature yeah like, how do we make sense of this yeah and and what we thought about with the podcast was um you know, talking like we not lots of people. There's not lots of people talking about books. Books, yeah. And and can we prompt some conversations? But also, what what so what? Like yeah. you read a book, so what? Well, Steve, you know, it's yeah. it's even more interesting than that. There's this mm. paradox, isn't there? Where you meet people who read all the time, and then you still meet people who say, "Well, I haven't read a book in years." Yeah. You know, I'm too busy. I'm, you know, who, who's got time to read? And that's so, from, true, from yeah. a social science point of view, that's really interesting to me. There are people that couldn't imagine life without books, and there are other people that haven't opened one in years. Yeah, and, and that actually that latter thing is a real issue, isn't it? Yeah. Because books seem to be one of those things that people drop off. You know, like logically, you, you fill up your life, yeah, um, and you meet people who always have that paradox of, I really love books, but I don't have time. So, <laughs> but also equally, um, you were very firm on this, Carl, is that we didn't want to do a 
book podcasts that just gave the book in four minutes or 20 minutes or whatever because that's defeating the whole purpose. Well, and there's plenty of places people yes. can go for that right like it has mm. to be about you and me and our relationship to the book yeah yeah mm. so that's that was really where we started and yeah just yeah just um yeah as i said to you before i mean it's it's very easy to sit with carl <laughs> and talk because it's well, a great well, conversation there's a robin so, yeah. quote that we love right you know robin is the the tv guy and the the comedian says i don't escape into books i launch out of them oh no nice. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I always love that like if i was to get a tattoo you would know, that be it? launching out of books something yeah. like that perhaps. yeah yeah well yeah, yeah. You never know um so yeah well, and, there... and, and what's been interesting is that like some of the feedback which which makes us excited about the fact that people listen and take something away is um i mean i've had friends saying they start started reading again yeah and, and all it took was um hearing about a book that made them interested enough to go and get it from the library or buy it sometimes walk past one in the shop and go oh that was the one the guys were talking about pick it up read it yeah and then they read another one and so i, I like, mean cool. we in that first season you know we deliberately pulled out a bunch of books that we knew people were talking about people like like atomic habits like yes. range and that enabled us to use those as a jumping off point into you know a whole lot of uh, other books and other thoughts and mm. more mm. deeper philosophical thoughts <clears throat> right so yeah and yeah that's exactly, amazing you know, and i think the thing i think the thing as well um when you think about books like literacy itself is um relatively recent in some ways you know if we went back a couple hundred years it wasn't like mm. people could actually read so it's yeah. this i view it as like this amazing treasure trove that you could walk oh, into sure. uh you know my favorite thing is to walk into a secondhand bookstore yes, oh, and, yes. and, and yes. you know yes. the the yeah. smell of the books and you know yeah. just opening something up and then it's like oh this was written in 1872 yeah. or yeah. you know even older and it's yeah, like it's a little isn't it a little slice of life of a person and in my so i love family history and my great great grandfather wrote a book in the late 1870s oh wow um i found it because i was researching and plugged his name into google essentially it came up found the oh, only wow. copy left at the library of congress in america like it wasn't a famous book it was just yeah, like no, no, this no. random person in virginia wrote what he was observing about nature and it's fascinating to read because he's talking in it and he's saying um you know winged machines will never transport humans and you know <laughs> but you can understand it in the 1870s oh, sure. yeah, it was yeah. like there's What's no the way you could it, ever it? do it yeah. but, but so i love so, the fact that it can transport you i guess from your yes. reality into someone else's world yeah, yeah in multiple ways yeah. like you say you're time traveling back there but also you know great authors can make you time travel into the well future. yeah so that yeah. whole notion of echoing down generations steve might be a great moment to segue and let's talk about <laughs> your book which is precisely about echoing down generations do you want to tell us what inspired you to write this yeah sure i'd be happy to <laughs> so this is it's a book called the apple tree and i wrote a little short story um yeah there you go that's it uh, I wrote a short story um, called The Apple Tree and essentially was I meet a lot of people in my work and they're doing amazing things. You two are included in them. And actually, most of the people who are joining the conference are in different rooms. For sure. Each each person cool, is doing something that they don't necessarily see the result right away. Mm -hmm. And it might might not happen for a week, might not happen for a month, might not happen for 10 years. And sometimes we can get frustrated or get tired of the work, the mahi that we're doing because we don't see the immediate result, particularly mm -hmm. in a social media age where we want to post and get 100 likes, you know, because that legitimizes it. So I wrote this little short story about an apple tree and mm -hmm. um, it's feeling like it's not having a place or meaning in its life, that nothing has counted in its whole life. And actually at the end, there's like a, oh, actually, you did have impact, you did have meaning. And so mm -hmm. I posted that um, on a actually European little journal place and had a whole bunch of people. Um, it's called The Empty Square. So a shout out to them. They're, they they publish lots of different things. And then had people writing to me saying, I was crying at the end of the short story. And it was making me reflect on how the work I'm doing matters. 
So then I went out and talked with Preston Hegel, who's an amazing guy over at Exchange, yes. and said, is there an illustrator that you could connect me with? Because I love the idea that yeah. writing is one form of art and, mm -hmm. you know, drawing is a, illustrating is another. And I admit mm -hmm. I'm not that side. So Cricket McCormick was the amazing illustrator who did the all of the illustrations. And then um, Jamie Small, who's an MC in the other room, he helped to pull it together at WordShop to make it look really nice and professional. So yeah, that's the origin of it. And I've just, Caxton Press is printing 5,000 copies. So kind of going oh, out on a limb that it will resonate and we'll see what happens next. Yeah, yeah this guy cried. Steve, I want, <laughs> Steve, I am one of the guys who cried, right? So you, you can mark that. And, and yeah. not only did I cry, but I gave my copy to my mum who also cried. So, so there's two. So yeah. we're talking as professional okay. podcasters here. This is a remarkable parable, right? It works. Like mm. we think it really works. We think it works in terms of helping people understand that the impact they're having might not be immediate, but also it's a love letter to the people that have had an impact in your life, right? Mm. As you say at the end, who is the apple tree in your life? This is a, re a remarkable book. And I, mm. it's the sort of thing you should buy and give away. I'm not just saying this because we're at your conference. It's the sort of thing you should buy and give away to people in your life that have made an impact. I, I'm, I come from a family of teachers, right? And I'm, I'm reminded that teachers have an impact that echoes True. down the generation mm. that they often mm. don't get to see or they certainly don't get to see immediately and that's kind of the vibe that you're getting to in this book there's lots of apple trees in education there's lots there? of apple yeah. trees in education <laughs> yeah well it's i'm glad you picked that up because my grandmother was a teacher and she used right. she used to teach new entrants and then you know yeah. 25 years later these grown people would approach her and say oh mrs mo you right. were my first teacher yeah. you introduced me to a love of learning and it's that amazing, you know, cycle of like, oh, you don't yeah. see the impact right away, but you are having impact. Yeah. And, and the notion of seeds, right, which goes back to your seeds podcast, the, the, the other book you've written about the lessons you've learned from the seeds yes. podcast. We yeah. love the metaphor of seeds. Yeah. So what um, has you, you, you're a man of parables, you know, like I'm really fascinated by the 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 Stephen Mo brain I suppose like how does the like do you do you think metaphorically a lot and and also you know what influence has your faith had on that yeah that's a great question I think um you know I'm now I'm I'm happy to share you know I'm kind of in my mid 40s so I'm 47 right, right. now I've yeah. had it's a good age you know I'm happy with yeah. this age I've had a, a life experience I've I've mm -hmm. lived in Tokyo and London I've in America and I've had various experiences. And I think what I've learned is that oftentimes the most powerful messages that you can give are conveyed by the simplest of stories. Great. So mm -hmm. if you tried to put what I'm the, the heart of that book, if I tried to write a textbook, you know, yes. and I went through like footnoting yeah. 500 yeah. authors yeah. and said, well, here's the 25,000 word version of what, why what you're doing matters. It yeah. just wouldn't resonate in the same way. Um, yeah. I got a lovely email just yesterday. I, I, I'm kind of giving the book away a lot. I'm not a great business person here, um, but I gave it to someone. <laughs> and generous person. And yeah. they, they go into Christchurch Women's Prison um, working with Wahine. Um, yes. And they, they took the book and they read it to 14 women. And they said at the end of it, it unlocked a kind of, they used the word a, a tapu space, like a mm, sacred mm, space. Mm of allowing people to grieve and have tears for the fact that they didn't have an apple tree role no. in their life, that the yeah. system had left them out. And so that that email was so powerful to me that it was helping people. And they've left oh, a copy sure. in the prison now that other people can have. So yeah, I think yeah. speaking in, you used the great word, parables, you know, like it's, mm. it's, a, it's a story about the deeper meaning. And my intent with the story is actually people might pick it up. This is the this is the new version here, the Caxton Press version. So they might pick it up and they would go, oh, great. I'm going to read that to my eight-year-old. Hmm. And the eight-year-old's going to enjoy it. But the adult who reads it is going to get to the end and go, Absolutely. okay, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. something oh, deeper yeah. here that is resonating. And the child's going to turn to the adult and say, why are you crying? Why are you <laughs> crying? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but there's a, there's a tradition, obviously, of books that work like this, right? You know, children's books that are not really children's books that have a profound impact. Well, we were talking about, I mean, we talked about Dr. Zeus, which is one of the, um, the places obviously that go. resonated yeah. with you as well. Yeah. You know, he's yeah, a yeah. author yeah. Who, yeah. who has this ability to 
Um, yeah, maybe next time you can write the version that rhymes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough Take, so tell us, did it did it come to you in a flash of inspiration? Did you write it all at once? That, mm, the original well, short story. Yeah, I mean, one of the things to know about me is that I I'm always writing. So I've written books about the future mm. of business, you know, like reimagining business. What could it be? And I, and anything I write, I try to weave in quotes from people that will yeah. resonate. So I'm writing anyway, that particular story. I think I just kept meeting these amazing people, particularly because of seeds. You know, I'm, mm, I've yeah. interviewed mm. 366 mm. people. Yeah, no, it's like, incredible. Yeah. The, the latest guy is um, amazing. Tatipine O'Regan. So yeah, hearing his that. life story and realizing that, you know, 83 years old, he's influenced and been influenced by yeah. so many people. So I think yeah. um, it just came out very quickly. That's the short answer is once I started, it was like, it came out. The, yeah. the beauty of it is that I didn't know how it was going to end as I was writing it. Like I was writing mm -hmm. and, and then you guys know the apple tree is here and then there's a stream and then something happens that means all the apples are falling into the river or the stream and they're being washed away. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know exactly what was going to happen next, but I just kept going. And yeah. So that's... Where, did the, where did the reveal of that storyline come to you? Do you remember the moment where you went, ah, now I've got the... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it, it was always going to be about seeds and the fact that you, I, I just love seeds. They're so magical. You put them in the mm. ground. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy to me that you get it, name any seed, you put it in the ground and a green thing grows. Like, yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. true magic, right? <laughs> so mm. I love that concept of seeds and I wanted to weave it in. And I thought it was going to be a story about how the tree was lonely and it, there was no companion. And it was mm. going to be, that was the main theme, which it has in the story. But then, yeah, I guess halfway through, I realized that there was a deeper thing that I could talk about. So that, yeah. that you've been surrounded by as well, haven't you? You know, like yeah. you say, through your interviews and everything like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so good. So good. I love, I, I, I love hearing how musicians write. Um, I, I got buried in well, the podcast about the, your creativity, but, right? but like, the creative, yeah. you know, the creative process, and also just recognizing that how everyone has a very different creative process. Um, yeah. you know, and and the inspirations yeah. come from different places, and people's approaches are completely different. And um, yeah, that's the that's the beauty of hearing, and it's also yeah. inspiring, I think, to hear how people create because so often we have a perspective in our head of what a creative what what we would label a creative person which is probably us identifying someone who's more creative yeah well that's <laughs> you know, like, that's an interesting yeah. point because when i introduce mm. myself if i say oh i'm a lawyer which i am like i'm a partner in a law firm yes. but then yes. i've written you know like what is creativity an and my challenge mm. to the people listening is that each of you can be creative in your way whether that's Absolutely. painting or writing or poetry or you know name your particular bent yeah. we all have creativity within us and i think it's a misnomer to say well those are the artists over there they're the only ones who can create art so that's yeah. another thing i'm trying to do is break down the barrier because it, i i read it out at a conference the other day um like 100 people there and i thought i'm just going to end my talk with right. reading the story and yeah. someone came up and said i've written a story i've never had the courage to publish Great. it but Great. as if you can do it, I can too. You know what I mean? So that was yeah. a really special moment. And then the other thing is that what I'm trying to do is think, how can it be a stone in the pond with the ripples? So there's an amazing exactly. piano yeah. player named Matthew Goldsworthy. He set up mm. Youth Arts New Zealand. So I reached out to him and I said, could I contract you? I'm paying you to create music to reflect what this story is about. So he's now written a piano piece, oh, wow. oh, which cool. um, I'm gonna have on the website. And then Jamie Small, the designer I mentioned, yeah. I've worked with him. We're gonna have a website where you can go and you can type a memory of someone who was the oh. apple tree in your life. Oh, nice. So it'll have an ongoing legacy, you know, like it will, a way to participate, I guess. The music yeah. will be playing, you can type some memory and continue that conversation so oh, i brilliant. hope it resonates with people and that it's something that oh, i'm sure you know they can get yeah. behind and and obviously it's like i don't have a budget for it i'm just doing it so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need people yeah. that but, help me but, to spread the word <laughs> so yeah. steve that, that that helps one of the levels the book works at right but it works at two levels as we said at the beginning mm. you know it helps people 
understand that they're the apple tree and it helps you recognize the apple tree in your life right whatever so that is the yeah. people that you're working mm -hmm. with in the impact community right this helps them understand that even though they're not seeing their fruit um you yes. know, they're still having an impact yeah that's um, exactly that's, right and that's why i put that at the end who yeah. is the apple tree in your life <laughs> yes um yes. and but i also want people to realize the, the person who wrote to me um and really made me think oh i should do this like she's an amazing wahine woman working in wellington in government and different things and mm. she wrote that she had cried when she finished reading mm -hmm. the story and mm -hmm. i thought mm -hmm. if it can help that person to realize that what they're doing matters she said basically she'd had a week of meetings and mm. felt like at the end of the week that it yeah. it was just pointless like why am i banging my head against Jeez. another wall yeah. but wow. then <laughs> she thought <laughs> actually <laughs> you know it does yeah. it, i need to yeah. keep going because it will have an impact so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And the other obvious point to make, right, is clearly you need to recognize that you're an apple tree in this impact far now as well, right? Like I'm sure everybody listening in is making that point. You yeah. wrote the book, um, but it actually gives us a great opportunity to say, you know, thank you for everything that you're doing as well. Mm. And it would be hilarious. I, I wish I'd thought of this. We could put your name in it and send it back to you. <laughs> Here's the apple tree in our community. Well, Steve, it's you, mate. Thanks to the podcast and the conference and yeah. all the work that you're doing. Um, Got to ask you though quickly, who's the apple tree in your life? Oh, that's a great question. I I have to go with an obvious one, which is my parents. Um, yeah. You know, I I just wouldn't be who I am without mm. the influence of my mother and my father. Um, you know, it makes me emotional thinking about it mm. Um, mm. because they lived they've lived lives that will not be recorded in newspaper articles. You know, they that's right. they've yeah. lived lives of service. They they joined the Peace Corps, which was set up by John F. Kennedy in the 60s. They wow. went and served in Chile. They ended up in Rome for a while. They helped Indian tribes in Washington State. And then they came to Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I think for me, their example has been something that has always resonated, you know, that I hope I can live up to what they set as an example. Mm, um, yeah. And then, and then from my perspective, it's actually a really simple equation. We, none of us will be here forever. Yes. I have the yeah, energy right. to do yeah. what I do today right now. So I need to be given to take another parable, which is, it's actually like a biblical parable, but it's a parable of the, the sower and, and the talents, you know, I'm giving you five talents what will you do with it? Will you bury it or will you multiply it? And it's mm. the same question that I think each of us can ask is you have 24 hours in a day. Elon Musk has 24 hours in a day. Everybody has the same amount of time that we've been given. When you're 75 or 85 and you're reaching the end of your life, will you look back and think, I did everything I possibly could with the time I was given um, and that might involve watching less Netflix, right? <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, what, what did I do? And so I yeah. want to be accountable with what I've got. And so that's the underlying, the foundation, you know, that's what's motivating me. Yeah. One of the most profound books I've read around that is um, 4,000 Weeks, which yeah. is a, a really um, Oliver, Oliver Bergman. Bergman. Yeah. And he talks about we are time. Yeah. Not we have time, we are time. And and we we always joke about um he he has a, a new acronym called JOMO, which is the joy of missing yeah. out. Which is <laughs> which is where if you accept that you've made a decision to yeah. do something, you've made the decision not to do a whole lot of other things. And you should probably either if that's grating you, you should probably ask yourself why, or you should just accept that you've made the decision. Of, We've made the decision to sit here and have a conversation with you. We could be doing something, you know, you like everyone makes decisions yeah. all the time. Yeah. And so why are you making those decisions? And if you've made the decision, just accept it and enjoy being in that moment. It's 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 deeply profound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but we catch ourselves with Jomo and I was, yeah, the in the book thing is is the same, you know, like we can we can listen to yeah. thousands of podcasts you know in our lifetime but there's hundreds of thousands we don't we can choose to read books and there's books that we don't read yeah. and that's fine but it's the, it, but again it goes back to this right it's the timeless wisdom stuff the stuff that we really like is that you know and 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 the work that we're doing you know we're seeing this overlap between greek philosophy stoicism yes, and Eastern philosophy I mean, and then it yeah. comes together beautifully and it's all it's the same old same old stuff right you know yeah which is, which is 
reassuring and terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And then just riffing off of what you're saying, um, I love this conversation. And one of the things that strikes me is that I was challenged recently, just be careful that you don't try to do everything. And I thought that was actually a really good challenge. I appreciated that someone said that to me because the danger is that you end up spreading yourself very thinly across yeah. everything and yes. you don't actually do anything with depth. So yeah. one of the things that I'm going to have discipline on, or I've told myself I will try to have discipline on is being very careful about what I say no to and what I say yes, yes to, because yeah. I want to make sure that the quality of what I'm doing, like I'm working on a book that I'm going to share about a little bit later after lunch in a session. I want to get that really deep. I want it to be meaningful. And I want to be careful that I'm not doing 15 other things that yes, are shallow yeah, yeah. that mean I'm not so he's, getting um, to that. Speaking so, of the, the power of books. So a great book, Essentialism. There's, a, there's the diagram of like, do you put your energy into lots of things and move little things or do you put your energy and go far on one thing? And I was like, oh, this is, you know, like this, the, this is the stuff that we've yeah. got sitting around us. Steve, Steve, Pete's just given us the, the time warning. So the time we've got left, you can take three books with you to a desert island. What are they, what are well, they? Let's do one. Let's do one. No. One each. Let's do okay. one each. Oh yeah. gosh. Okay, you go. We'll start with one and then we'll see how far we go. Okay. So I, I have an obscure choice, which you yeah. probably haven't heard of, but that's a good thing, right? Um, it's an author named Annie Dillard. Um, mm -hmm. She won a Pulitzer Prize for her book, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. And it, it, was, it was written in the 70s. Um, I have a small connection in that she went to the same university that my mother went to on the East Coast of America. My mother was, I think, one or two years ahead of her. Um, but anyway, Annie Dillard, she's an amazing nature writer. Somehow she goes deep where you don't expect it. So the book is her um, living in a cabin beside a little creek, and it's her reflections. It's things like there were moths going around a flame today and and here's what I observed. And wow. so it's very, it's an obscure choice, but I really love the way that she weaves in nature and, and deep thoughts as well. So yeah, yeah that would be my, my go-to. <laughs> go, 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 you got, go. Oh, I don't, I, come on. I, I don't know. I, 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 what's like, what's my, I, would, I would resonate to an, yeah. an, like I would, people who know me would probably go, he's going to say a nonfiction book. Yeah. But I know there's a whole series in this, but I just lost myself in Harry Potter. And it sounds very cheesy, but I, I would, <laughs> quite, happily, Potter, I would yeah. quite happily take one of those books and, and that would be it. You know, like, uh, and I had the pleasure in, of reading that without seeing the movies. So I only read it in recent years. And we read the books end to end in the series, me and my wife together. So and you've just gone, we go from one book to a no, series. No, but I mean, no, but I mean, any one of those books. He does books, this all the time. On one of those, <laughs> he doesn't answer the question. Right. But any one of those books, because yeah. because uh, of the, the creating the world in your head is very powerful. So go. Uh, oh, look, uh, if I could only choose one book, it'd be Zen on the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Okay. Because well, I just copy it. Because I just read it. I re it's a book I read every five years and get something different out of it. Yeah. I know it's a very boring choice. Uh, it's not even a very well-written book, but it is a book that's had a huge impact on my life. Yes. There are a few that are worth rereading yeah. out there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was well, it's interesting you what's what next. resonates with you and then what stays with you. Like that Pilgrim yes. at Tinker Creek. I think I read it when I was 20 and it had an influence in that it, it made me look at nature differently. You yeah, know, yes. that that everywhere there is beauty. When you're walking in a city street and mm, there's concrete yeah. on the path and you see a little weed you know to call it that yeah. coming up there's beauty in that and so yeah. it opened my eyes to a new perspective and that's what i love about books yeah mm. well this, this is a great place to wrap up first of all there's beauty everywhere second of all there's beauty yeah, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna <laughs> your impact's gonna resonate in ways you you don't know and third thing there's universal wisdom and choose carefully how you spend your time because how you spend your hours is how you spend your days which is how you spend your life correct oh man I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> this love has been it. great, Steve. Thank you, man. I love. Thank this you, book. guys. It, really if, appreciate if you're it. Watching it, get a copy, give it to your mum. Yes, <laughs> make her cry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks, Steve. Well. Sean, Carl, Stephen. Um, thank you so much for uh, such a great dynamic conversation there. I think that was really good bringing together. Uh, two really kind of uh, inspiring podcasts. I really recommend you go and check out Two Free Two. Um,
podcast um, to pretty degrees, sorry. Um, oh, for for me personally, um, a couple of the key things is I found it really interesting, uh, Sean asking you, Stephen, around what is your apple tree and just kind of the power of whakapapa. Um, and also what you talked about around kind of this fact of that we all have the power to be artists, right? And kind mm. of overcoming these barriers of perception. Well, you're a living um, example of that too, Pete. So yeah, oh, yeah. thanks, buddy. Creating <laughs> <laughs> um, too. Yeah, and I think I think for me actually, like uh, art was actually one of my biggest fears in life growing up. So yeah, was, me too. But I over yeah. overcame uh, in my my late teens. Um, it was drummed into me at school. It, yeah, it was coming yeah. To art. And now it's coming out of your other drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everyone, right. we are going into a little wee morning tea break. Um, we'll be starting back up at eleven um, o'clock. Oh yes. Yep, starting back up at 11 o'clock. Um, in the curry room, we're going to be having Jennifer Wilkins ho hosting a conversation around uh, degrowth, um, which should be fantastic and really insightful. But enjoy the break, take a little wee breather, and we'll see you back again at 11 o'clock. Thank you. <music>